Hi, I'm Megan and welcome to my kitchen. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing four Thanksgiving recipes with you all. These are perfect not only for Thanksgiving, but for this fall season and even the upcoming uh, holiday season. Now, I've mentioned this before on my channel, but just in case you're new, when I share Thanksgiving recipes with you all, I could be wrong on this, but I feel like with Thanksgiving, for the most part, we either have family recipes that we kind of stick with, or we have a relative, you know, an aunt, a sibling, mom, dad, you know, whoever, who always brings the macaroni and cheese or who always makes the turkey or the pumpkin pie. And I feel like a lot of times we don't stray too much from that. So I've shared those traditional recipes before on my channel, um, but I also try to share, like I said, things that maybe you haven't tried before, something that you can either add to your Thanksgiving table or something different that you could take somewhere that maybe, you know, won't already be on the table. Somebody else won't have already brought that. So I am super excited to share these recipes with you. They were all so delicious. This video is also part of a collab hosted by Valerie Hargett. Y'all, Valerie is so sweet. I know you will love her channel. I'll have it linked down in the description box below, as well as the collab playlist. So as soon as you're done watching my video, make sure you head on over there and check out the playlist. You will find lots and lots of yummy Thanksgiving ideas. First up, I'm making a slow cooker pork roast with balsamic and herbs. Now, I decided to do something different than turkey for a couple reasons. First, I have many subscribers and viewers who are smaller size families. It's either themselves and their spouse or themselves and a family member or a roommate. And, you know, so they don't need to cook a whole turkey. And aside from that, not everybody likes turkey. Growing up, I was not a turkey fan at all. My pa wasn't either. And Granny would always make a ham at Thanksgiving, you know, for those of us who didn't love turkey. So I wanted to share something a little different than turkey. And plus, um, you know, sometimes turkey can be a little bit on the pricey side and a little outside people's budgets. And I feel like pork loin and pork roast go on sale, at least in my area, they go on sale pretty frequently. So let me show you how to make this. I am also excited about this recipe because it totally frees up your oven. You can just pop this in the crock pot. And of course, the recipe will be linked down in the description box below. I've got some olive oil, balsamic vinegar. I happen to have this Tennessee um, whiskey barrel aged balsamic. This is just what I've got on hand, so I'm gonna use that up. We've got honey, some salt and pepper, Dijon mustard, dried thyme, bay leaves, some fresh rosemary, or you could use dried, and then you can use either a pork roast, pork shoulder, pork tenderloin. Um, my grocery store had pork tenderloins on sale this week. Buy one, get one free, so that's what I went with. We're gonna start out by searing our pork. Now, if you absolutely don't wanna do this, don't worry about it, it'll be fine. You can just season the pork on all sides and place it directly into the crock pot. But we're gonna take just a couple minutes and get it seared up. So I'll put some oil in this cast iron skillet. I've got it on about medium high heat, just seasoning it with some salt and pepper on all sides. And you, it doesn't take very long at all, just maybe a couple minutes on each side until it is golden brown and it looks like this. I'm gonna place that into my crock pot. Now I'm going to get started on the balsamic dressing. It's going to become the glaze for this. So to a small bowl, I'm going to add in the balsamic vinegar. Now a quick note about this. I would recommend using a good quality and by good quality, I don't mean it has to be expensive. I just mean maybe not the cheapest on the shelf, but if that's what you can afford, if that's what you got on hand, no worries at all. A better quality balsamic is usually going to be a little thicker and a little more sweet. Um, so if you don't have that, no worries. Just give it a taste before you pour it over the pork. You might want to add in just a little extra honey. Speaking of honey, I've added that as well as the Dijon mustard, and the recipe does say the mustard is optional. I added the dry thyme. I'm going to give that a really good whisk and then pour that over my pork. After I've done that, I'm going to add in the rosemary and the bay leaves, and then that's it. I'm going to cover this with a lid, and you can cook this on high or low, but how long you cook it really depends on whether you're cooking it on high or low and the cut of pork you're using. Now, I just did one pork loin this night. It was just for Gary and I, so it only took like maybe four hours on low, uh, but obviously if you're cooking a pork roast or a pork shoulder, it's going to take, you know, probably I'd say at least eight hours on low, but 
this is what it looked like when it was done and it's not burnt. Remember we used balsamic vinegar, which is very dark in color. So what I'm gonna do is pull out that pork loin, place it on a plate, cover it with foil, let it sit, and we're going to boil down the juices to make a glaze. So I just poured what was in the crock pot through a fine mesh strainer just to get out the herbs and then bring this to a boil, reduce it to a simmer until it's really nice and thick and looks like this. And I'd also recommend giving your glaze a taste and adjusting the seasonings if you think it needs it. So for my pork loin, now I thought I had turned my crock pot off, but I had actually turned it to warm. So my pork loin continued to cook. So when I went to slice it for this, it literally just fell apart. So excuse the plating on this. I did the best I could, <laughs> but um, you know, it doesn't matter. It was still delicious. It still looks nice, whether it's, you know, chunky like this or sliced pretty, but I just drizzled some of that balsamic glaze on top and served it with a little fresh rosemary. And this was yummy. Next, I'm making roasted butternut squash with goat cheese and pomegranates. And when I saw this on Pinterest, I knew I wanted to make it for this video because it just looked beautiful, perfect for fall, perfect for the holidays. So here are the ingredients that I'm going to use. And of course, as usual, all of the recipes will be linked down in the description box below for you. So first up, we need some salt and pepper, garlic powder, some balsamic vinegar, oil, I'm using olive oil, we need some butternut squash. Now, of course, you can get a squash and wash it, cut it up yourself. To make it easy on me, I bought the squash already cubed up. I've got some goat cheese. Now, I just have honey goat cheese on hand, but you could use plain goat cheese. And goat cheese, I mean, depending on where you get it in the brand, it can be a little on the pricey side. If you have an Aldi in your area, you can get goat cheese at Aldi at a great price. I've got some fresh rosemary. Now, I have a rosemary plant, um, so I just pulled this off from that. I'm sure you could use dried rosemary if that's what you've got. We need some lemon juice, and then last but not least, some pomegranate seeds. Now, usually at this time of year, pomegranates are in season, so you can get them at a great price. You can also um, get a, one of the little containers of pomegranate seeds. They're a little more on the pricey side, but they're already, you know, ready to go for you. We're going to start out by roasting the butternut squash. To this bowl, I'm going to add in my butternut squash cubes. Now the recipe does say to do this in the oven, which you can totally do, but I am going to do this in the air fryer. So to the squash, I'm gonna add some olive oil and then garlic powder, salt, and pepper. And then you're going to give this a toss and just you know combine the oil and the seasonings together. Now, the seasonings on this are a little more on the simple side, but we're gonna add lots of other yummy ingredients to it. Now, once I've got that combined, I'm going to place it into my air fryer basket. And I air fried this at 400 degrees for about 15 to 18 minutes. I did go through and shake the basket halfway through. You just wanna cook these until they're tender and golden brown and they look like this. Now, I wanted to show you this in case you aren't familiar with the pomegranate. All I did was slice it in half. This is what the inside looks like. So you've got kind of like a white membrane and then you have these little seed pockets. So all you do is just, you know, kind of break the little white part off and pop out the seeds and that's it. And I've seen like on the Food Network and everything, I call it spanking the pomegranate. I don't know what else to call it, but <laughs> they'll take the pomegranate and then take like a wooden spoon and kind of smack the back of the pomegranate. You can do that, but I feel like juice goes everywhere and I just find it easier to pick the, the pomegranates out myself. Now I'm gonna make the dressing for the salad. To this small bowl, I'm adding some balsamic vinegar. And the recipe suggested using a good quality balsamic, and I would agree with that. You know, I mean, don't like go crazy and go out of your budget, but if you've got a pretty good vinegar, I would use that. So next we're gonna add in some lemon juice and then some of the chopped rosemary. And again, you can use dried. We're going to season this up with some salt and pepper. And then I don't believe off the top of my head, the recipe called for olive oil in this, but I added just a splash and then I'm gonna mix that up really well. And a quick note back to the balsamic. The reason I say, and the recipe suggested using a good quality balsamic is because a good quality balsamic is gonna be more on the sweeter side. A less expensive is going to be more vinegary, which is fine. You can just balance that out by adding like some honey or agave to your dressing. So to this bowl, I'm gonna add in the roasted butternut squash and I just allowed it to cool for like maybe five minutes or so while I was making the dressing. 
and there was a little bit of oil in the air fryer basket that went into the bowl so i just removed it with some paper towels i'm adding the dressing and then going to give that a stir and then we're ready to finish the salad so we're going to add some of those pomegranate seeds next i'm going to add the goat cheese and i forgot to mention um at m my local grocery stores anyway like kroger food lion walmart i can normally find already crumbled goat cheese at a pretty reasonable price it's usually like two something for a little container so you can totally use that in this i mean it's already crumbled for you so once i've added the pomegranate seeds and the goat cheese i'm going to give that a stir you can serve this however you like i decided to put this just on a white platter i thought the colors would be really pretty after i added it to the platter i did add just a little extra extra pomegranate seeds, rosemary, and the goat cheese on top. And look, you guys, is this not so pretty? Those little pomegranate seeds, to me, they look like little jewels in this. It was so pretty. And this was delicious. It was different. You know, we, we really haven't had anything like this, but it was so good. Now, in the South, it's pretty common for you to find cornbread on someone's Thanksgiving table. When I saw this recipe for brown sugar sweet potato cornbread, I was like, yes, please. This was delicious. It was so good. So let me show you how I made this. Here are the ingredients that we're going to use. And side note, I did have the recipe. First, you're going to need some cooked sweet potatoes. Now, I just took these sweet potatoes, washed them, popped them into the air fryer, roasted them at 400 degrees for about 20 minutes until they were fork tender. You could also roast these in the oven. You could microwave them, boil them, whatever you prefer. We've got some milk. I just have 1% on hand, so that's what I'm gonna use. I've got some self-rising cornmeal. If all you have is plain cornmeal, you can totally Google, you know, how to make it self-rising. Basically just add flour, uh, not flour, salt and a leavener. We've also got some all-purpose flour, baking soda, baking powder, brown sugar, vanilla extract, salt, and then the recipe suggested serving this with a molasses butter. So I've got some molasses and softened butter. I've got the oven preheating to 375 degrees. In a bowl, we're gonna add in the cornmeal. Next, I'm adding in my flour, and then I'm gonna add in the baking powder, baking soda, and salt. Now, normally when you're baking, you you know separate your wet and your dry ingredients. And I'm used to putting brown sugar in with my wet ingredients. It had me put it in with the dry, so I just went with it. It turned out fine in the end. Um, you can put it in the wet if, if you prefer. So once we've got all of the quote unquote dry ingredients, in this bowl, I'm gonna stir it until it's really well combined set it to the side we're going to start on the wet mixture all right so to my separate bowl i'm going to add in my sweet potatoes all i did was remove them from the peels and mash them up with a fork i measured out how much i needed for the recipe i'm going to save the rest for you know another use next i'm going to add in the egg and i like to take the fork and just kind of beat the egg a little bit we are then going to add in the vanilla extract now for this cornbread um it's a sweeter cornbread, obviously, but it's not as sweet as like a sweet potato pie would be, if that makes sense. It's in between a sweeter cornbread and a sweet potato pie. So not as sweet as a dessert, but it is a little bit, you know, if you like and normally make sweet cornbread, then this, this will totally be up your alley. Now, I also added in some melted butter and milk. I'm going to give that a really good mix, and then we're gonna add our wet ingredients to our dry ingredients. Now, when you're doing this, you wanna mix it until everything's combined, but don't beat it to death. You know, just mix it until it's well combined. Don't over mix it. Now, as you can see, I started to mix this, and I could tell I need more liquid. So I added in a splash more milk, maybe another like quarter cup or so, and then stirred that just until it was combined, and then we're ready to bake this. So usually when I make cornbread, you know, I preheat the cast iron skillet because you want that really crunchy crust. We're kind of not going for that same effect here. So I did not preheat the skillet. This was probably overkill, but I went ahead and sprayed it with some cooking spray just because of the sweet potatoes and the sugar. Wanted to make sure it didn't stick. I added my cornbread mixture to the baking dish or my cast iron skillet, and then I popped this into the oven, and this took about 25 minutes or so to bake. Um, I did a little six inch cast iron skillet, just cook it until it's golden brown, and a toothpick inserted into the center comes out clean. 
Now, if you're from the South, you know there's some unwritten law somewhere that says you have to serve butter with cornbread. It, it's just a fact of life. <laughs> so this recipe suggested a molasses butter, and I was like, hmm, that sounds good. Um, just two ingredients, had them on hand, just softened butter and molasses. That's it. You just mix that up, and then it's ready to go. Now, if you do like I did and forget to set your butter out, I just popped it into the microwave on defrost for just like maybe seven or eight seconds. Doesn't take very long at all because you're not trying to melt it. Just soften it up. Now, here is the cornbread. I got it out of the oven, let it cool for a few minutes in the pan, flipped it out onto a plate, slathered the top of that with some of that molasses butter, and y'all, this was delicious. It was so good. Even the best cornbread recipe sometimes can read a little dry or a little grainy. The sweet potatoes in this, it was so moist, but you still kind of got, I mean, obviously you still got the cornmeal, but it was not dry at all. And like I said, it, it wasn't as sweet as a sweet potato pie, but it was, it was so good. If you like cornbread, I highly recommend you give this a try. And I think it's perfect for Thanksgiving. It's festive with the colors. And of course, sweet potatoes are in season and it's just something different. Last but not least, I'm making my Grandma Lois's squash pie. Now, if you're new to my channel, my Grandma Lois is my dad's mom. She passed away, I wanna say I was like eight when she passed. She passed from breast cancer. And unfortunately, I don't have a lot of memories of her because I was so young when she passed. And you know, for most of my childhood that I can remember, she had cancer and so she was in and out of treatments and everything. So, so I don't have a lot of memories of her, but I feel like this recipe, it's a way to be with her during the holidays and, you know, kind of get to know her in a way that I didn't get to know her when she was living, if that makes sense. So here are the ingredients that I'm going to use to make this. Now, again, it's a squash pie. That's how the recipe's written. The yellow squash at the grocery store this day, it wasn't looking too hot. And the recipe did say that you can use sweet potatoes. So I'm using sweet potatoes, but you can totally just use regular yellow squash. And again, this is something different. You know, we see sweet potato pies a lot at Thanksgiving, but I've never really seen a squash pie. I mean, so again, you know, squash pot, this is something different that you could add to your Thanksgiving table. So aside from the squash or sweet potatoes, we're going to need some evaporated milk, pumpkin pie spice, salt, granulated sugar, brown sugar, eggs, butter, and a pie crust. And you can totally make your own pie crust from scratch. I've shared a recipe before on my channel that's easy and delicious. I'll link that down below. But today I'm just doing a deep dish frozen pie crust. So you want to start out by cooking and mashing your squash. I just roasted my sweet potatoes in the air fryer at 400 degrees for about 25 minutes on each side. You want to cook your sweet potatoes if you're using them until they're fork tender. If you're using the squash, you know, wash it, peel it, and then you could boil it, um, you know, roast it however you want to do. And you just want to make sure that the squash is totally cooked through and tender. The oven is preheating to 450 degrees. To this bowl, I'm going to add in my mashed sweet potatoes. I just removed them from the peels and mashed them with a fork. Next, we're gonna add in the brown sugar and then the granulated sugar. Now, a quick note here. Because I was using sweet potatoes instead of the squash grandma's recipe called for, I started out by only adding half of the amount of granulated sugar that the recipe called for. You'll see I make an adjustment in just a little bit. So once I've added the sugars, I'm gonna add in the evaporated milk and then whisk that until it's really well combined. Then I'm going to add in the melted butter. Whisk that in really well, followed by the pumpkin pie spice. Once I've added that, another little mixeroo. Now I'm adding the salt and just in case you're newer to baking, a lot of times when recipes call for salt, again, this is just in baking, they're talking about just plain old table salt, the iodized salt. You don't want to use something like kosher salt in this because you've got, you know, bigger flakes. They're not going to mix and dissolve as well. So I gave this a stir and then you can see here that I gave this a taste. Now this is totally fine to do because I had not added the eggs yet. If you've added the eggs, I wouldn't give it a taste. So I felt like it needed just a little bit more sugar. So I added a little more sugar, gave it another whisk, tasted it. I was happy with how sweet it was at this point. So at that point, I'm gonna add in the eggs. And when I type out the recipe in the description box below for you, I'll make sure to make the notation about the sugar, um, you know, when using sweet potatoes versus squash. For the sweet potatoes, I ended up using a cup of granulated sugar as opposed to the cup and a half that the recipe called for. 
So once that mixture is really, really well combined, we're gonna add it to our unbaked pie crust. Now, I decided to place this onto a foil lined baking sheet just in case it happened to bake over. We're gonna pop this into the preheated oven again. It was set at 450 degrees for 10 minutes and then we're gonna reduce the heat to 325 degrees and bake it for another 40 to 50 minutes or so. It just depends on your oven, but when you pull it out, you don't want it to be like really jiggly. And when you insert a toothpick into the center of the pie, it should come out clean. And I apologize, it wasn't focusing on the toothpick there, so it's a little hard for you to see, but you just wanna make sure that the toothpick is clean. So I let this cool on the um, baking dish for about five or 10 minutes and then I moved it to a wire rack and you wanna allow this to cool completely. Once it's cooled, you can slice it up and every you know sweet potato pie pumpkin pie whatever it's just better with whipped cream it's just just a fact of life <laughs> now i just used the like aerosol whipped cream you could of course make your own homemade whipped cream i think like a maple whipped cream with this pie would be delicious now this was my first time making this pie and i don't remember ever having it when my grandma made it it was so good. I actually made it for like one of our family Sunday dinners and my dad said it tasted exactly like he remembered. So if you're looking for a good sweet potato pie or squash pie, I recommend you give this recipe a try. All right, that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that you got some new ideas from it. Maybe you try something new this Thanksgiving. And if you do, let me know that you did and let me know if you liked it. All right, have a great rest of the day. Bye-bye.